All right, so to do the moon cuts, you can see there's your two spots where the cams are gonna come through. Now, what I kind of do is just kind of held the tape at the end here and sort of eyeballed it. You can measure the actual distance between there. I kind of came up with the first one, two and a half. And I drew a little Sharpie line up at the top. And the other one I came up with six and five eighths. <laughs> so if you look, I kind of just drew a little bit of a, a mark at that point. It should come out in the camera. And I kind of just traced it on its way down and just kind of show relative of if it looks like it's centered or not. And then I kind of just held the three and a half inch hole saw up to it and just kind of just drew a quick little rough line to see where it goes. Um, one so I'm kind of just holding the drill bit to where the the actual outside diameter of this eighth inch drill bit will be flush with the top of that surface there all right I'm actually gonna grab the hole saw Lower. Hold on. All right, so here's the two pieces that came out. Now, what I do want to show you is this was the one on the left. I stuck with what I, where I say to put it, kind of the eighth inch drill, but I went right above this lip here, as I like to so the surface. The diameter of the eighth inch was level with that. And then obviously the whatever the drill bit size inside the actual hole saws went above it a little bit but it came out good i'll show you in a second i said to start there too um same spot on both but ocd kind of kicked in this is up to you you can see where i ended up putting it the eighth inch i actually put like right where the radius of this matches and then the eighth inch made it bigger i did that because as i started drilling it um the height of this radius was you know whatever x and then over here, it was a little bit lower. Um, that kind of just irked me. So I know that the valve is on an angle or on a slant. That wasn't really what I, I wasn't judging the top of the radius to the top of the valve cover. I was just judging where the peak of this radius was on both sides. All right, so there's three coats. I will say definitely uh, this dupe color paint that I use does seem to be a bit thicker, which we'll see if that turns out good. So for the color, I'm doing the valve cover. I'm going to do it in the Toyota quick sync color with the actual cars. So that's what I decided on. I'm going to spray the whole car, the whole uh, valve cover that color, and then after it fully cures, I'll probably wait overnight, I will then go back and try to sand off the paint on the leathers, and I'm going to paint them black. You could um, rub some light oil on all the leathers, or maybe even some Vaseline, and that way when you were done, you could just wipe and it should come off. I've done that in the past. Um, I don't know why I'm not doing it now. I just decided to try to do something different. It is what it is. So, I'm going to do a light coat of this, and let's go. It's probably hard to tell now. We'll show it again tomorrow. Right now, it's looking real smooth. Um, the color looks really good. It's hard to tell if it's exactly the same as my car. Um, I got my car painted the 4, v, the 4 V6 of Toyota. Um, again, I never really put it next to an actual Tundra Tacoma or something that's painted with that color. So, it looks like it. I mean, we'll find out, I guess, one day when I get to drive it and whatnot. But... I'm going to try to show you the the fan on this. Maybe I'm delusional, but I swear the fan of this aerosol is just a little bit... It's just wider than a normal aerosol. I don't know.
on the exhaust cam. So your normal rocker situation will look like so. And this is the VTEC lobe. When you push it, notice how it's not doing anything. Well, it is. It's going down, but it's not actually grabbing the other two rockers on the left and right of it. When VTEC is locked, the pin will lock across. And when the VTEC lobe hits this, these two will open, pushing the valves open. If you look at the number one cylinder here, when I push the VTEC rocker, you can kind of see everything's moving together already. Many ways of doing it. You can use the airport uh, on the block. I don't have a compressor anymore. You could put BBs in between them, which I'll show you in a second, which is not what I'm going to do. Or they've got little pins that you can use as well. So I'm going to use the pin method. It's a little safer, in my opinion. I'll show you why. So first, to get the intake cam out, or to get the intake rocker assembly out, you got to pull this little pin out. Just screw like a little screw into it. You should be able to just pull up on it. If you can't, just grab a pair of pliers or something just to pull up. So once that's out, you're going to have a bolt there and a bolt there. I'm just going to pull this back one out so I can pull the assembly out this direction and we'll work on this cylinder here. All right, so once you have both those bolts out on either side, you should be able to push the actual rocker shaft assembly out. Grab a just, a, just something to push in there. It's not going to take much force, or shouldn't at least. I'm going to push and I can already feel it coming back on my right hand now. As I pull them out, I grab the rockers. All right, so once you have your three rockers out, here they are. I already kind of showed them to you in a previous video, but watch this little center pin here. She gets real loose. Just take it out though. We're not gonna be using that for the for the time being for degreeing the cams. Put it off to the side. If that's off to the side, what you could do now, which I'm not going to do, but I'm just gonna show you anyways. If you have BBs or you wanna buy some or they do come with most of the degree kits, you can put the BB there in that little hole there. And as that gets, because this is springy, the little BB will sit there and it'll kind of put pressure along all the pins and it will lock VTEC. But my issue is it's kind of a pain in the ass to get in, A, B, I don't want to have to have the risk of dropping that BB somewhere in the head and having to fucking find it. So we're going to put it off to the side. It's staying the same. The last rocker, take its pin out. It might take a little bit of some persuading. Okay, so once it's out, you know which one it is. It's a little smaller one. As opposed to the bigger one you had. So put both those off to the side. Now, the VTEC rocker, the VTEC locker pin that comes with the Xenocron kit or most of the degree kits, I believe. Basically just gonna take that, stick that in that rocker. It's replacing that little one. It's replacing the big one. Make sure your two, make sure the, again, the little pin there is inside this groove. I don't know if you really can even do it without it. It's pretty difficult. Then you're gonna grab your right lobe. And if you notice, there's gonna be a little bit of some pressure. Just kind of squeeze it, it'll all go together. And we're going to reinstall it. And reinstalling it, don't forget with this rod, with the rocker shaft, this hole is gonna have to go up. So you're gonna put that pin back in there. So I'm just gonna move it all to the side for the moment. Take the screw out now. And pushed in. So I'm gonna do cylinder number one is where I'm gonna put this fixture. I'm gonna loosen those two bolts as I already see they're loosened. The fixture is gonna look like so. Uh, it comes with an extension for the center for the spark plug, so I added that and kind of just tightened it down in the center. I'm going to put those two back in those two holes there. When you put the indicator on there, put it right on the tip of the retainer. Anywhere on it, as long as you can get a good grip, grip on it, it's going to be consistent going up and down. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so they're in. I tightened the set screw. I just put some tape there. I don't know. Don't worry about it. It's holding it. So the next thing is you want to find top dead center. I already aligned the crank with the little mark on the uh, oil pump. But now you want to verify it. So I'm basically going to turn the crank and you're going to watch the dial indicator. So what you're seeing is the piston's going down, down. The indicator's no longer making contact with it. Keep turning. Eventually we'll bring the piston back up. So you start seeing it moving again. So the piston's on its way up. We're going to get the most, the value right where it peaks. We're gonna go a little slow now and watch it. All right. 
right, so we're at four for the little number. 65, 66, 67, 68, and as you start to see, as I start to give it a little more pressure, it starts to go back down, so we're gonna say 68. So I'm just saying 0.4 and 68. If you wanna move your little arms there, you can, it's up to you. Um, so then now what I did is I put the cam degree wheel on and I tightened it down with an impact and I've got my Got to tweak this a little bit here, but I just took a piece of welding rod and ran it to it and it's at zero now So now we're at zero. We know we're at top dead center and now we're going to mainly focus on The actual cams So let's do the intake cam. So first we're gonna keep rotating the crank and we're going to find out where the actual peak is, sort of similar to how we did top dead center. Just going to keep turning the crank until I start to see an indicator move. All right, here we go. So now we're going to find out where its absolute peak is before it starts to drop off again. Again, when I say numbers, I'm just relating to the bottom white number, the bottom number on the indicator. So I know it says point, but I'm just gonna refer to it as right now as one. So like 165 we're at right now. 164. 163. Notice it's, still, it's, it's going down again. So 163 would be our high. So now, Skunk 2's center line says they are 94 degrees. So we got to remember 163. And then the Skunk 2's, let me just double check. But the tuner 2's, it says the intake center line is 94 degrees. So we're going to rotate this guy to 94 degrees after top dead center. Rotate it around. All right, so the indicator's moving. Let's go to 94 degrees. So there's 90. Yes, I guess you could use a smaller pointer, if anything, but this should get us pretty close here. We'll call that 94. Now, we know that 163 was our peak lift of this. As you notice, so it's pretty close. We're at like 164. So I'm just gonna loosen the cam gear bolts here. So the idea is we're gonna rotate this cam gear until we achieve peak value that we had. And then retighten it. All right. I'm just going to tighten the cam gear a little bit here. Well, in this case, we're going to go counterclockwise till we get to 163. Oh, see, that's going a little too far. Probably right there. And where does it show in the cam gear out of curiosity? It looks like it's actually just plus one. Again, you're talking very, very minute adjustments here. All right, so we're gonna call that plus one. I'm just gonna tighten up the cam gears and we're gonna do basically the same process for the exhaust, just the skunk twos. Instead of going to 94 for the intake, we are going to go to 112 before top dead center. All right, so current status is motor is kind of coming together. Valve cover came out pretty good. I'll give it like a seven out of 10 uh, learning experience, mainly for the moon cuts. I wanted to make the radiuses equal with each other, which I did come full circle. That's probably a bad idea. I don't know if you can see it, but now there's more cam gear showing on that side than that side. It is what it is. 
Um, you live and you learn. I am waiting on the Skunk 2 dress up kit, which will just make everything just look nicer. That's why it's not really fully on. Um, I'm always going to put something on and I'm missing hardware or whatever the case is. Just again, I feel like I should have bought the motor, maybe an assembled motor already. I wouldn't have had all these hardware issues. So, um, that being said, alternate brackets on. I test fitted the half shaft just because I got new hardware for it. I want to make sure that is the hardware that I had for it. Breather fittings put in, plug put in, new O rings on the water tube. Knock sensor, probably not going to run one, but I'm just going to leave it there just to fill that plug. Um, as far as the hoses, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I may just go to the store and get some 3 8 half inch, uh, 3 quarters, whatever the case, just fuel line and then just start randomly routing how I need to. Um, transmission mount on, everything on the trainee's on. I've noticed I'm missing a speed sensor. Just stuff like that I gotta find. Um, I did decide to go with the Automator Z-Series gauge. The boost gauge came in, the oil pressure gauge, but I did go with the PLX wideband. Just some new ARP hardware that I know I don't have. Stop tech rear brake lines. VTEC solenoid uh, conversion plugs. Again, I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm gonna just, I'm really just taking this for the OBD1 plugs. Same thing with the injectors. Uh, yes, 300, I think I already said that's in with a max solenoid. Again, it's going to be running NA first. Started in a later video. Started the Valix AN, AN uh, Valix brake line kit. There it is. I'm going to attach probably something similar. How that says this little clamp to go up there. Um, having a hell of a time getting off this, so I can kind of work with the fuel, be the just the whole fuel line, the JB tuned setup there. I'm going to replace those clamps over here too. Just to hold the rest of the harness in. Um, I got in Innovative's Pro Competition track bar. There's not a lot on it. I know it's brand new. It's going to go in the car. Um, I don't know if this is in this video or not, but I kind of started assembling the Skunk 2 Ultra Manifold. This is their Skunk 2 fuel rail, the air pressure, air motor fuel pressure regulator. I have an IACV. I'm probably going to put it in the car just to help with idle. I already have it. Um, it's still 50 50. If I'm gonna do it or not, uh, we'll see where that goes. Other than that, we are making progress, or I am at least. Um, got more hardware coming in. Next thing is I'm gonna see if I can put this thing underneath the car. So I keep saying that I'm gonna jack it up and I'm gonna figure that out today. Um, ch -ch -ch timing cover I got. I don't know what its deal is. It doesn't want to go on. I had to grind some of the bottom. Hopefully you can see that, and it still doesn't really want to get in. I don't know if it's a uh, got. An, I don't know. It's a different OBD series or what the case is, but she does not want to get on. So, yeah. Bernie water pump, time belt tensioner, obviously the Hossport mount. Skunk 2 cam gears. I think it overall looks pretty pretty snazzy. The distributor hardware is coming. Um, this, I'm pretty sure, goes to the heater hose. I'm thinking of either just, if I can get a block off plug, that'd be great. Or just leave this and just put a cap over it. So I'm not running a heater. Same thing with a couple of these other hoses. Uh, this is not oriented. I'm gonna have to do that because I don't know. I got to put the oil pressure sender on it and just kind of see how it's gonna work and fit. Other than that, that is about it. I think we're getting pretty close here to mounting it now and actually maybe just getting it up. I just want to get the engine bay as ready as possible. That way, when the motor's in, I'm not having to dick around and just it'll just be harder to work while the motor's in the car. Um, it'll probably go in without the intake manifold just to make my life easier. If I do have to work on anything else back there or something or another, and going to the bottom, I don't think it's gonna clear the subframe, the rear subframe. So, aside from that, I'm getting anxious. I only have essentially the weekends to work on this. And even then, like I said, if I'm missing a bolt or hardware, it really just puts a, a damper on things. So I try to think of what I do and don't have ahead of time. Um, if this was at my house, this thing would probably be together already. Um, and videos would be in a better sequence maybe. So. For anyone that is watching, I appreciate you, and until next time.